So we're talking to Sid Field, who is um, widely recognized as a screenplay guru. Uh, he's been in the business for uh, a number of years. And Sid, maybe you could start out by just telling us how you got involved in the business. Well, you know, it's a long story and a short version. So I was at Berkeley in the 60s wanting to become a doctor. And I happened to read for a play uh, that I got the lead in called Wojciech. And the performance was successful. And one of the members of the audience there was a French film director by the name of Jean Renoir. Renoir saw me and thought I would be right for one of the leads in his, the world premiere of his play called Corolla. So I worked with Renoir for about eight months on the play. And he, went, and he told me that uh, I should forget medicine and go into film because the future is film. So that, those words, and he sat down and he wrote me a letter to UCLA Film School. So I left Berkeley, and this was in the early 60s. I left Berkeley, came to UCLA Film School, was uh, hanging out with other film majors, uh, one, and one group had a garage band called The Doors. So Ray Manzarek and I just simply hung out together. Jim Morrison and I made films together. And then after a year, I left, and they left as well. And they went on to become The Doors, and I became, I went on to become a shipping clerk at David Wolper Productions. So I was hauling cans of film around, but learning about film. Uh, because I knew how to use a library, I was put in charge of research. Wolper Productions at that time was like this dynamic uh, crucible of talent. We had Jack Haley there, we had uh, Billy Friedkin there, we had uh, Waylon Green there, we had um, uh, Ed, Ed uh, Spiegel there. We had all these people there who went on to expand the technique of the film industry uh, in an amazing way. So I became a kind of jack of all trades there. I could do research, I could be in the editing room, I could go interview people, I could do directing, I could do producing at David Wolper Productions. Before I uh, ask you about the influence of Jean Renoir on your entry into the business, perhaps you could tell us how those various roles with Wolper informed you uh, in your current career, how they assisted you. It sounded like a wide variety of experience in the film <laughs> business. Thank you. <laughs> I realize only now looking back that I cover a lot of ground. Uh, Renoir was instrumental to me because he always showed me how not to take the obvious way, that you could communicate ideas in art in film, uh, and that the technique of film would change over the years, which he saw already. And uh, working with him inspired me to follow film. At David Wolper, we were making documentaries, so there were no rules whatsoever. So one of my jobs was on a series called Hollywood and the Stars. And it was my job to go into an editing room. And if we were doing a show, half hour documentary shows for entertainment TV, like uh, The Great Directors, The Great Lovers, um, Social Films, all these topics of film, we categorize them, and I began to look for various clips that we could pull from those films to illustrate the talent and perspective of, say, a great director or a great lover. I did a whole thing with uh, John Barrymore one time. I did the very first story on Jackie Robinson, uh, directed and wrote that story on Jackie Robinson. Uh, and that taught me that film was a unit of action telling a story. And it told me that you had to have a subject. And it showed me that there had to be an unfolding of the story so that people who did not know anything, say, about John Barrymore or Jackie Robinson could understand who they are, what effect they had upon their area of expertise, and to carry it forward in a dramatic way so that character overcame conflicts to reach the point where he became a household name, he or she. And um, that's really how I began to understand, not knowing it, on the dynamics of film and how to visually tell a story. Renoir certainly taught us, and you've quite rightly 
pointed it up very eloquently, that you could impart an idea through the film medium. And um, I myself was particularly intrigued by uh, his film called The River, mm -hmm. simply because if we look at today's political, geopolitical circumstance where you've got a misunderstanding between the East and the West, I mean, the river so beautifully and uh, eloquently tells a story of this family where you have this Indian uh, boy um, engaging in a friendship with uh, uh, an English boy, an American uh, uh, veteran, uh, entering into the story and this wonderful merging of these two cultures and, of course, pointing out their differences. And um, So I think that's uh, absolutely poignant depiction of how films can impart an idea and it's, it had a huge influence on me uh, certainly but go go a little bit if you can go a little bit deeper on Renoir I mean what it is about his films that obviously you must have that's a great recommendation I mean not too many people can say hey I had a recommendation for film school for Jean Renoir that's huge but there must have been something really deep about his filmmaking that that struck you I remember that when we were rehearsing Corolla at the University of California at Berkeley, we would go into this basement of the theater building and we would sit around this table and read our parts and Renoir would talk about his life, his father, his background, and so on. And one day he said, we're going to see a screening called Grand Illusion. And I knew Renoir was a filmmaker, but I had no idea of what his films were about. So he gave us a little background. You know, the Nazis hated that film when they occupied Paris. They rounded up all copies of the film, destroyed the negatives of Grand Illusion, so it did not exist. In 1954, uh, they found a copy of Grand Illusion that the Germans had tucked away in a hidden vault somewhere, and they found that, and he went and had more copies made, and by the time we showed the film, this was like the first American screening in the U.S. Now, film, I grew up on film. My, my um, uncle was the head of the 20th Century Fox Film Department for some 50 years. He did all of John Ford's uh, films in terms of developing the footage in the lab. He was the only one that John Ford would, uh, would admit to do that. So with Renoir, he started talking about his life and what it was like living with his father. And his father always taught he and his brothers how important it was to go from nature. He says, if you paint a leaf, his father, Pierre-Auguste Renoir, if you paint a leaf, nature has millions of leaves to choose from. But if you go from a picture of a leaf, you only have one. So go into life, explore life in all its complexity, and bring that to your art. Renoir always said he painted with life. And one of the things I remember that he always said over and over again is that perfection exists only in the mind and not in reality. So when you think about that, you know, our expectations of what we do is so big and so clean and so clear, the truth is that for us to transpose what's in our heads to a word, to a piece of paper, to a book, to a painting, to a, 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 a concerto, the chances are if we get 90% of what we intend to do, we'll be fortunate. He always would say he would do three drafts of anything. He would throw down words on the paper for his first draft. He would then edit that first draft from say 60% up to 80%, and then he would go through the final draft, uh, changing, articulating, condensing, pr pruning, and polishing, and so on. And he said that if he ever got to 92%, that would be it with him, because he knew he could never get it perfect. And if it was perfect, he would put down his pen and paper at that time and never put a word down on paper again. His ideas were such that when I saw Grand Illusion and the line in that movie that said, we fought this war to end all wars, and the German says that's just a grand illusion, I just totally freaked out. Because that idea is such a noble, high, extraordinary thought. 
I thought this is where you can say ideas. This is where you can bring new ideas into, into fruition, into life, basically. And he was the one who showed me that you could do that. He said, you never played the cliche. Never, never, never play the cliche. Always, if you want to, throw it down, then begin to modify it and find the way that is against the cliche. And he would illustrate that by saying, when you want a new jacket, you walk into a store, you try on a jacket, you love the jacket, but the sleeves are too long, it's a little bit tight under the arms, and the back is a little bit big. So you go back and you have the tailor make the alterations and you go back onto the feels very, very good, but maybe it's a little bit tight here. So the tailor lets that out. And then you put that coat on and it takes you maybe 10 to 12 times for it to feel comfortable, to feel like it's your coat. He said, that's the creative process. So no young uh, screenwriter should get discouraged by writing a number of drafts, obviously. Well, how many drafts would you counter <laughs> a number. I would say that uh, the average draft, I'll, can I share my own experience? Uh, I wrote a screenplay eight years ago. I did eight drafts, page one rewrites because it wasn't working right. We sent it out, there was some interest from some people and then everybody passed on it. Cut to eight years later, I get a call from my former agent who says, you know, I think there's some room for your screenplay now. I think now's the time. So. I met with him, I met with his associate, and they had two very interesting suggestions about the screenplay, a sci-fi film. They said, make the character more active and create one more action sequence. So I said, well, can I do a page one rewrite to make the character more active? And I said, absolutely. And I went through that thing bit by bit, piece by piece, line by line, and made it more active in a very simple way created a new action sequence, cut out 10 pages of the old script, and now we have a brand new screenplay, changed the title, and it's out there now. We just got turned down from George Clooney, so that's not too bad. It's now at Michael Bay, and we've had two meetings with Michael Bay. I don't think they're gonna do it, though. But then the project is going to Brad Pitt. I mean, who knows what's gonna happen? The important thing, as Renoir used to say, is that art is in the doing of it. In the doing of it, meaning you put in your time, you put in that effort for your project, and that's the real art. Not when it gets made 11 years later and then somebody says, oh, this is great, how did you get the idea for it? The point is that art is in the doing of it. And I try to do those new things all the time because that's Renoir in me.